Welcome back to my lecture on behind the scenes of the Spice Circuit Simulator. And now we're going to go to the final part of this lecture, which is going to discuss some other stuff, um, specifically types of tools, versions, and options that you can use in a Cadence Simulation environment, um, ADE. So, tools and version. Um, Cadence provides a package called the Custom IC Design Package, which includes two uh, tool suites. One is called Virtuoso, and the other is called Spectre. They also use the um, kind of notation IC, or IC, I think 618 or so is what's uh, current now, uh, for Virtuoso, and Spectre is called MM Sim. So these are the two environments that they have, and you see some uh, kind of way that they market it over here. They have sometimes confusing names, uh, but what is important for us is that the analog design environment, ADE, is inside the Virtuoso package, and that's kind of a UI for simulating this type of stuff, and it includes things like Viva, which is the, uh, you know, virtualization, the calculator and waveform viewer, and so forth, and Spectre, on the other hand, it includes APS, Spectre X, XPS, Spectre AMS Designer, Spectre FX, Spectre XRF, which we're going to be discussing a little bit about now. There are different simulation options. Um, that's kind of what I was saying about MM Sim. So there's the Spectre, which is just the basic Spice engine. I, I would call it the old Spice engine because basically it's been replaced by APS, the Spectre uh, Accelerated Parallel Simulator. I believe there are differences in pricing and licensing between these things. I don't really know about this because as an academic, um, we don't pay uh, industrial prices, but there may be a reason to use one over the other because of lack of licenses. Um, Spectre X is their next generation that is supposed to uh, provide much higher performance, higher capacity, and so forth. And then we have a fast spice engine, which is called XPS, or Spectre Extensive Partitioning Simulator. And there's also the Spectre AMS designer that mixes, um, that's for mixed signal simulation, using both digital type of Verilog type stuff with uh, the the more analog, you know, circuit type of stuff. So that's uh, called the Spectre AMS designer. Let's uh, go over Spectre APS, which has been the workhorse for the last uh, several years for, for this type of Spectre simulation. And it provides full baseline Spectre accuracy, so it has no change to the core Spectre time step algorithms. And that's a, a really important thing. So where, uh, whereas a lot of the other ones, they're going to give up accuracy for, um, for speed, APS was a breakthrough that it was able to speed up the uh, circuit simulation by a, a, a large amount without giving up on accuracy, which is sometimes more important than, than the speed. Okay, it actually uses the same use model as the baseline Spectre technology, so we're just going to add the APS, the plus APS to the Spectre command line, or um, if we go into the uh, high performance simulation options uh, form, we're going to choose APS as our simulator. It provides a significant performance gain on single and multiple cores, so they claim 5 to 100x simulation performance versus baseline Spectre for non-RF circuits and 5 to 20x uh, X for Spectre baseline against spec baseline Spectre RF simulation. And it has a much larger simulation capacity than a regular Spectre. They claim that it can do up to 10 million transistors, 5 million, uh, 50 million RCs without reduction. Um, it can do e EMIR simulations with over 500 million elements. Okay, and really, it improves convergence over core Spectre technology. So unless your design is trivial in size, um, Cadence uh, really tells you that you should use the APS option. And again, I cannot uh, say anything against that. So just a couple of options about making Spectre APS even faster if it's going too slow. Well, um, there is now an option called plus plus APS, and you can see it here in the uh, high performance simulation options. So it is a bit of a trade off on accuracy for uh, for uh, speed. Um, so if you use plus plus APS, you can go and get a bit better accuracy uh, at the price. Uh, a bit better performance at the price of accuracy, but still keeping very high APS style accuracy. Um, there is a another option called post layout, plus post layout, and that is um, usually uh, going and trying to do all kinds of optimizations on the types of capacitors and resistors and inductors that we get um, that are put into the circuit due to post layout simulation after extraction. 
There is also a lightweight um, simulation that you can do plus light, and you can try that one out as well to get better speed, see if it keeps your accuracy. And something that is very um, that is very helpful is to use multi-threading. The default is eight, but you can do plus MT equals 16, or go and put a number, you know, whatever number you want inside the form to get uh, to use the maximum number of cores that you can use. So as a kind of flow chart that's given by cadence, um, the way that they say that you should use is if you put the in the plus plus APS, you um, give the air preset. So if you use plus plus APS equals moderate, and if you're at post layout, you give the HPA option of the post layout command. And that is the, the, the default where you should start out as according to uh, cadence. If it's good accuracy, then fine. Um, you can keep on going to get better uh, you know, to, to get if to get better accuracy and so forth using plus APS with liberal or plus plus APS with liberal for a bit faster and so forth. Or you can go and uh, fall down into plus APS equals moderate for better accuracy than uh, plus plus APS equals conservative or plus APS e equals conservative. And you can also go and change rel tall and so forth. So this is kind of a flow chart that Cadence uh, provides to uh, get the most out of what you can do. But, but for most chances, um, you know, just use the plus plus APS. Uh, the default would be moderate. And if you're using post layout, add the plus post layout and the default will be HPA. Spectre X. That's the next generation of Spectre. It includes enhanced simulation performance and capacity with a simple plus preset model. Um, it's highly scale, uh, scalable for multi-core simulation with plus MT, and it's distributed multi-process simulation with plus XDP. Okay, so the presets, which uh, I guess are kind of like the air preset from before, we would do Spectre plus preset equals and one of these options, CX, AX, MX, LX, and VX, and it tells you uh, what the different trade-offs over here, and they ignore the air preset option because they're the Spectre X um, preset type of a thing. For post layout, you do Spectre plus preset equals MX plus, plus post L preset equals whatever you want. Okay, and the XDP option can be distributed on up to 512 cores. So uh, you have to set that up, obviously, with your IT. Then we have Spectre XPS. And I didn't discuss anything about Fast Spice here in, in this lecture. That's a completely another type of a framework that was developed also at Berkeley, which shows how you can really speed up Spice by really giving up on accuracy. But XPS is basically Cadence's new Fast Spice simulator. It um, replaces the uh, previous UltraSim that was their fast by simulator before. So to do this, you do Spectre plus XPS, and you can use these uh, MT, and uh, there are different uh, uh, circuit presets which uh, are used by XPS. So the plus CKT preset can have parameters such as DRAM, SRAM, SRAM power, uh, PC RAM, and flash, which are optimized for simulating those types of you know, DRAM or SRAM or PC RAM or uh, flash types of technologies. There are also many options for reducing parasitics, partitioning, providing more accurate analog simulations, etc. inside XPS um, because those are the systems that fast spice type algorithms use to get this improved speed up. Finally, I wanted to mention Spectre MDL. So this is the, the last thing I, I actually want to talk about, and um, it is a relatively new uh, measurement description language that, sp that Cadence has added to their uh, simulation suite. It's a scripting language that enables you to define measurements in batch, batch process simulations. So I kind of mentioned before that what um, we, we used to do or usually do is we um, like uh, external kind of languages such as Python for, for running things. Um, and we would use uh, Spectre kind of uh, net lists and um, run them with a Python uh, environment running on, you know, our just our Linux system. Um, but now Spectre um, provides this MDL, which can replace that and enable you to do all kinds of uh, uh, scripting in a... a uh, in, in an internal type of a language. And it can also access things like Viva, which are not as uh, easy to do with uh, the external Python type of uh, um, running things on, on Spice and Spectre netlists. 
So um, basically, I, I am not very prevalent in MDL, but you here's an example of how such a uh, an analysis is run. So you write the uh, you know the keyword measurement over here, and then you give it a name and identifier, which would be AC run in this point. And you have these qualifiers inside, which is how you define measurement. So you write export, you write the type. It's a, a real uh, type of a data type and then you write the names DC gain and zero B cross so we define two variables or two measurements that we want to um, uh, measure which are called DC gain and zero B cross zero DB cross over here okay then um, what this is going to do it's going to call a specter analysis called ACL and as you can see um, down here in the netlist file we have an AC analysis, sorry, AC1. We have a netlist, uh, we have an analysis called AC1, which is an AC analysis with some definition that's inside our netlist. So um, this uh, measurement, AC run, is going to um, call the, uh, the test inside, uh, the analysis inside the netlist over here, okay? And um, then it, it, it can say over here what the different parameters are, these uh, exports that we had over here. So DC gain is going to be DB mag V out divided by mag V net 21 um, at 10. So this is using the Viva type language. So if you have these nice calculator type of, uh, uh, of expressions that you wrote inside Viva, you can um, write them directly here, which is something that you can't really do with uh, just standard specter. Um, type of command lines. Maybe you can do them in Ocean, but that's a, another option. Um, okay, and then 0BD cross uses the cross uh, and mag and so forth and, and so on with the different falling edges and thresholds and so forth and so on. So this is how I, I, I define my measurements and then I can uh, just do run AC run and it will run that and I can um, I can uh, then script around it with, you know, just any type of uh, um, type of tool that runs these types of measurements inside. So if I um, run specter MDL, that's the command line, uh, I give this as, uh, you know, my batch file and I give this netlist as my input. Um, that's how I run one of these simulations from the command line. And if I, what I also can do, if I ran a simulation, it dumps out a um, dot raw uh, type of a uh, folder which has all the raw data that was uh, you know the, the database data that was dumped out of my simulation so I don't have to run the simulation again the specter MDL I can just post process it by um, pulling out these measurements that I defined here and that's using MDL without the uh, you know without the um, uh, the input SCS over here but uses rather the input dot raw which is the um, what was the output of my previous simulation. So, um, and Specter MDL is another way to go and approach this type of uh, you know scripting of our of our uh, very useful. So that was it for this uh, lecture about Spice, about behind the scenes of Spice, and really um, I learned uh, most of the stuff from a course I did with the wonderful Andrew Beckett of Cadence, who has a course called Using Spectre Simulator F Effectively, and if you want to really know um, this stuff better, I, I really advise you trying to find uh, the option to go to his course. Um, Kenneth Kunder, it's wonderful book, The Designer's Guide to Spice Inspector, is really the Bible of this type of stuff, and it explains everything that's going behind the scenes with historical perspectives and so forth. And, of course, you can look at the user guides of Spectre, of HSpice, of different types of these tools. So that's it for now, and as usual, you are always welcome to ask me questions and comment, put comments on my YouTube channel.